All right. Well, welcome, Mr. Fukuda. Or should I say Dr. Fukuda? Very nearly doctor. Yes. <laughs> Very nearly. Ah, we'll just go with doctor. Fukuda. You're, you're, you're pretty much there, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what are you doing now? Uh, the steps you're kind of taking. I know you um, took the pre-med route with biology. So if you could just explain uh, what you're doing now. Yeah, so uh, I'm currently a fourth year medical student at Loma Linda University. Uh, I'll be graduating in a couple, couple days here uh, and then starting a residency in emergency medicine over at UC Riverside. That's nice. And those are, that's really close, correct? In, in geography, if you will. Yeah, yeah, just 15 minutes away. So it's nice same, to kind of Same here. town, same church, I assume. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's got to be really nice. So that's got to be kind of different for you, like graduating medical school with, with no, no graduation, I presume? <laughs> right, it's going to be a, a Zoom graduation. So just on to the next. Medical school's <laughs> over, now it's just into residency. Just skip Yeah, kind of just a crazy time. But I'm very excited to graduate and looking forward to kind of fighting back and getting, uh, getting into the hospital. So what, what kind of residency program are you going to do? Uh, so it's a three year emergency medicine residency okay. program. And you've, you've always wanted to go into to ER, uh, physician. Um, yeah, I mean, I was always kind of open-minded. Um, I think, uh, at masters actually was one of the first times where I was able to shadow and see some really critical emergency situations. And that kind of, planted the seed for me to uh, want to do emergency medicine. So okay. it's, been a, it's been a long process. <laughs> That's a little uh, pre-step, pre if you will, into one of my questions. So you did do shadowing. When you were here as a student, where did you shadow? Um, so the majority of my shadowing I actually did on a, a GO trip, global oh, outreach trip to West Africa. Oh, perfect. Um, so a team of five of us were able to shadow some surgeons over there. We got to see a lot of uh, trauma and um, other emergent situations, so. I'm sure you saw a, a lot when you were there, right? A yeah, lot. everything, yeah. yeah. Those surgeons over there are amazing. They can handle sure. any, any situation, essentially, so. How are the resources over there when you went on your GO trip? Was it just like a normal medical facility or were they kind of working with, with what they had? Oh, yeah, definitely more austere. <laughs> um, definitely had to get a little bit more creative. Didn't have the MRIs, the CT scanners that we do in the sure. States, so. That's incredible. Um, yeah, very cool to see medicine in that setting. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. So uh, well, let's go, uh, let's go step back. So tell me about your time at Masters, but first, uh, how'd you end up at TMU? Yeah, so um, actually one of the pastors at my home church up here in Seattle uh, at the time, he was a graduate of the seminary. <clears throat> um, and so that's kind of how we heard about you, the Masters. Sure college at the time <laughs> same here TMC. Yeah. yeah 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 now uh, now tmu um but i was able to kind of visit on one of the uh uh president's scholarship weekends um and really fell in love with the people there um everyone was just so uh, intentional in getting to know you and sure um eventually yeah. kind of decided to go to to masters <clears throat> that's a that's a huge testimony so when i first came to masters uh, you know, the, the first day of Wild Week, you're moving into your dorm and you just have all these current students or, you know, student leadership people that just come to, they rush to your car and just help you move in all of your belongings. And it's, it's, it's very hospitable. So it's, yeah, it's a great, great, great memories looking back on like the, the intro week uh, to Masters as well. So, so how did you, how did you choose Masters over other, other places that you, you wanted to go to? Yeah, so um, I think in high school, I was kind of realizing that college was a very important time in my life, just yeah. in terms of kind of being out on your own for the first time um, and kind of figuring out uh, what you want to do, your passions and things like that. And so um, when I was thinking about it, I also wanted to find a place that really um, prioritized uh, like a Christian education as well, um, sure. just Figuring out how to how to serve God uh, in in your career and in your personal life, um, and so when I was looking at all the different colleges, you know, um, I kind of wanted to. I was thinking about pre med at that point, so University of Washington, um, obviously, sure. is a bigger state. Right, school. right, yeah, right in your right in your backyard and yeah, exact exactly. Cool programs um, in the country, yeah. Exactly right. So 
um, just thinking through like traditionally, most people that are pre-med will want to go to like a, a big state school to do research and whatnot. But sure. um, I really, I really valued the the Christian aspect to the education that masters provided. Yeah. Um, and I felt like out of those questions that I had, like what were my passions? How could I serve God in my career? That masters was really going to help me answer those questions. Yeah, that's, um, that's so, wonderful. That's yeah, wonderful. And, and with your time here, all your four years, did you find that to be, you know, true, the evidence of that? Definitely, definitely. I think um, a lot of colleges and universities, they, they really seek to impart knowledge, but um, very few colleges uh, want that knowledge to actually help change your life. And so, yeah, true. Yeah, so, I mean, as you know, as we both know, the, the biblical worldview that we're, that we're taught here is, is bar none. Um, and where you can say, like, yes, I can go to a, a highly regarded you know, medical program at, at UW, but what am I losing in that as well? So we're here, you know, you're, you're just gaining everything in, in your walk with the Lord daily, just being surrounded by people who, who love the Lord and are after the same thing. So, uh, mm-hmm. and on that subject, you know, with your uh, bio pre-med program, tell me about that. Just tell me your, your joys with that, all the, the late nights you stayed up for the papers, <laughs> all the hardships. Yes, yes, no, it, it is definitely rigorous. Um, I'll, I'll give it that. But what I, what I appreciated the most was just being able to uh, work in kind of a smaller setting. Um, yeah. I think by the time that I was a junior and a senior, a lot of my class sizes were, were less than 15 people. Um, I assume so those people probably became pretty close brothers and sisters, kind of family, because you guys are all in this hard major to get mm. in, it, in it from the beginning, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no, we were all in the trenches together. Yeah. Um, really formed a lot, of, a lot of good camaraderie, and we were also able to get to know the professors on a really personal level, too. That's huge. Um, yeah, and that was just so cool, being able to see just how much they really cared about you, not only as a student, but as a, as a young person. Yeah, yeah, and your walk, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's just a testament to, to start our professors here who, who all just love the Lord and want to see the young people here just uh, succeed not only in, in their scholastics, but, but with their walk with the Lord too. So, and that was definitely a big impact of, of me uh, coming here as well. Um, so yeah, it's just another, another good testament to, to the, the bio program. So uh, through all, all your four years there, can you, can you highlight just like one, one experience where you're like, this is, this is pivotal to where I know I want to go into, uh, you know, ER medicine or, or stay on the, uh, the position route? Or was it just all, all encompassing? You knew that this was that what I wanted to keep doing. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, one of those moments happened in Africa. Sure. Um, we had a really, a really critical case where uh, a young girl was very sick, and she came in, and um, you know, I wanted to just do something, anything that yeah. I could like do to to help her, but I didn't have the skills necessary. And just to see uh, one of the doctors there, uh, Todd DeKrieger, um, him just take coming into the situation, cool, calm, and collected, and and really um, take care of that girl and her family. Like that was the yeah. point where I was like, okay, I would love to be able to um, to train and kind of commit my life to being able to help people in those situations. That's wonderful. That's that's great. So most most students uh, in pre med do they get the chance to go on a global outreach uh, or just a medical mission like that, or did you have to do something separate to get involved? No, actually, so it was, it's pretty crazy just how many pieces fell into place uh, just to land a team of six of us in West Africa. It's kind of mind blowing, but um, I know every year that I was there, Masters had um, pre med trips over to the Philippines or West Africa. So, sure. um, yeah, those connections are still pretty strong. That's great. That's wonderful. So, after you graduated, you're like, all right, now the next step grad school or medical school excuse me yeah so how walk me through that so how did you select where you're going to go or was it just kind of throw darts all over the map and thank the Lord (laughs) said yes (laughs) yeah I mean uh, a lot of it was kind of throwing darts all over the place it's it's really challenging to try to get into medical school it becomes more competitive every year um but I I really had a good sense about Loma Linda yeah. Um, one of the few uh, Christian medical schools in the uh, in the country, mm-hmm. um, Loma Linda, and then Liberty University over on the East Coast. Sure. Um, and so, uh, 
yeah, I could definitely see God's, uh, God's leading through that whole process. Sure. I ended up getting in off of the, the wait list, actually, into the Loma Linda University. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And that was just kind of a testament to, to God's to leading. Yeah. yeah, completely. No doubt. So with your time in med school, how was the transition from, you know, your undergrad to medical school? And uh, the part B of that is, you know, how, how did TMU prepare you for the classes that and just the experiences that you're getting into for, for med school? Right, right. Um, definitely, definitely rigorous medical school. Um, yeah. well, the things that they say about it, uh, they're all true. All true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. It's, yeah. it's very difficult. Um, but I feel like the professors at, uh, at Masters really helped to prepare me well for, for the science courses that I had to take there. Um, and then just like almost even more importantly, um, being able to figure out kind of a, a work, life, spiritual balance. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what uh, master's kind of helped instill in me mm -hmm. uh, in college and that kind of helped carry me through medical school just to avoid burning out um, sure. getting really bogged down by all the all the school work. In, in med school I know it's it's such a, a hectic schedule to where you're working you know multiple 12 to whatever hour shifts a day. Uh, you still have time for to be involved in, in ministry and serve in your local church? Mm -hmm. Yeah you do. You do. Um, obviously, sometimes it's not as much time as you would want. You know, if you're on a surgery rotation and you're working six sure. or seven days a week, <laughs> it's kind of difficult. Um, but I would say that's that's essential. Like you need to, despite how busy medical school gets, you need to be sure. involved in a local church. Um, oh, wow. Very important. Yeah, yeah. So uh, through through medical school, uh, all all four years, just walk me through a, a, a highlight of maybe a, a specific case or just scenario to where you were even more just uh, confirmed that this is this is where God has led you to go to to serve and, and have a, a vocation mm -hmm. um, I think one of the the patients on my internal medicine rotation mm -hmm. um, medicine's kind of interesting and the doctor patient relationship is really unique sure. uh, in that you get to see people at their lowest points um, and this particular gentleman, um, he had uh, kind of an autoimmune disease. We really didn't know what exactly was causing it. Um, and that uncertainty was kind of leading him to um, kind of just think more about spiritual things. You know, he had never really <clears throat> grown up going to church or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to kind of have really good conversations about um, life and what happens after, after yeah. death and things like that. And so... Um, I feel like medicine kind of places you in a really unique place to share the gospel with, with people. Yeah. And, and they're very open to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some, some scenarios where, you know, patients on their uh, deathbed, if you will, I'm sure there's, there's questions or just uh, being willing to, to hear something they've, they've never heard before. So that's, that's wonderful that, that God just allows opportunities like that for you just to, to be a beacon and, uh, evangelize and so i'm sure there's a lot of people that don't uh see that there is an aspect of of uh evangelicalism or just to be an evangelist of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the medical field mm, yeah yeah no i i can't tell you how many times i've heard stories of people who come in with these really weird illnesses and really weird symptoms and it doesn't quite fit any disease that we know of sure. but we kind of realize after talking to them more that they've had long-seated issues with their parents or yeah. um, have someone that they, that's wrong them that they haven't forgiven yet. Um, and so being able to, to reconcile all of that, that often yeah. leads to them having their symptoms completely resolved. So sure. there's definitely a spiritual component to That's, that's wonderful, on. just the evangelism component to your profession. You know, we're, we're always beacons, no matter where we, where we go or what we do. You know, we're always representing our masters so that's that's wonderful that those opportunities are are presented to you and that people are are willing to hear from you and hear ultimately the the gospel through you mm -hmm. definitely so so uh through through medical school you you have all these experiences and then uh that's done now going into to residency uh is that another throw a throw a couple darts at a board one that's <laughs> yes praise the lord for it 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, residency, so we go through the match process. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, you throw darts so walk all over. So walk me through that. So what does that mean, the, the match process? Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, basically, after medical school, uh, every medical student will kind of apply to all these different residencies, interview um, <laughs> wherever they get the invitation, mm -hmm. and then they will rank the places that they interviewed on based on their preferences. And then the residency programs on their end will also kind of rank the applicants that they interviewed. Yeah. And so there's, there's a national uh, matching algorithm that kind of matches the applicants to the programs based on the preference list. Interesting. Um, yeah, so yeah. Can you, can you kind of tailor that to, to say like, I kind of wish I, you know, I want to go here uh, specifically, like, is there, there are portions for you to say, I want to stay on the West Coast, or is it really mm -hmm. up to whoever decides where to place you? Oh, yeah, no, I ranked all the, all the California schools yeah. high. Stay on the West Coast <laughs> first, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. then slowly move East. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's great. So, so how long is your residency program? Uh, so it's going to be three years long. Mm -hmm. Three years. Okay. And then after that third year, what are the, the goals or, or next steps after that? Yeah. So after that, I'm, I'm finally done. <laughs> That's it. It's after, That's it. after a 12 year, uh, thir 11 year process, making um, the you're big finally bucks. free to, to kind of work <laughs> in an emergency department or um, pursue your interests. And so I'm yeah. hoping to do some, um, some medical missions, trips, some global medicine, in addition to uh, maybe moving back up to the Northwest and working around here. Yeah, so that was going to be my question. Do you want to stay in California or do you think going back home into the Pacific Northwest and Washington State area is kind of where you, you'd like to be uh, practicing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see where the Lord leads. But right now, I'm thinking it'd be nice to kind of come home after all these years. <laughs> sure. Sure. I'm, I'm sure your parents would like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So with all the pr prospective students watching this, uh, if you have any words of uh, advice or even cautionary tales, just to say, <laughs> you've been there, you've done it, anything you could say, like, I wish I would have done this with, you know, heavy loads in this semester, not so much at the end, or different, different classes, or different internships, or, or shadowing opportunities, anything like that? Mm. Um, I would definitely just say that you need to take advantage of, of everything that, um, college offers to you. There's sure. just so many opportunities, especially at master's too, just to get involved uh, in service, whether that be to the community um, or overseas on, on uh, go trips, sure. um, to take advantage of. Um, and then also just uh, leadership as well. I was able to yeah. um, be part of the student body leadership and that was also a really valuable experience um, as a, as a pre-med. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's, so there's just I a think, ton of I different opportunities. I think that's great advice to enjoy the 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 time here, you know, the 18 to, to 22 year old time frame in your life, just to mm -hmm. enjoy the friends, the fellowship, the 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 college life here that's so unique uh, about masters. Obviously, academics is is high priority, but uh, just not let that consume you to where you don't uh, enjoy everything else. Is that pretty much? Kind of exactly exactly yeah even though you're exactly. pre-med and you have all those science classes it's yeah it's important yeah sometimes you need a break. <laughs> yeah you need a break you need to go out to ventura every once in a while just just go sit on the beach yes. get away for a little bit yes <laughs> oh, that's that's wonderful that's great man so um what are some ways you know we as an institution can, can continue to serve to serve you so i know once once we're back able to to meet up i'd love to to go back out to, to lunch with you and get another update. But uh, while yeah. we're talking, is there anything that uh, I can do for you or, or your family up there in Mercer Island? Oh, <laughs> um, can't really think of anything at the moment, but uh, I do know that, that there are a lot of alumni who have gone into medicine who really want to kind of invest uh, in the pre-meds and the bio department at Masters. And so sure. just figuring out ways to kind of get that involved uh, get us involved and incorporated. I think that would be really exciting. No, that's huge. Really that's huge. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, I'd love to, to follow up with you on that. And you know, that's just an encouraging thing about master's graduates. You know, looking back on our time here, you see how pivotal, or excuse me, how pivotal it is in just your your walk with the Lord, but also just the the transformative years of you know eighteen to to twenty two, and and you just see how uh, the biblical worldview is just lived throughout 
this campus through everyone from the professors, faculty, staff, students. Um, and it really molds you into whatever vocation ministry you go into. You can always look back at your time of master's and say, this is why I, I am who I am today. Like I can see the Lord working through my life all throughout, you know, university to, to now. And then uh, the giving back to it just to make sure that it's, it's there for, for your kids, my kids, you know, future students. So you know, right. we have a heart thinking like that uh, already. So, uh, well, that's, that's all the questions I have for you. I told you it'd be short and sweet, right? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so like thank I said, you. when, uh, no, thank you. Seriously. Thank you again for, for joining us. We, we, uh, we greatly appreciate you and the, the rest of the Fukuda family and, and your guys' just love and support for, our institution here. So like I said, when, when all this is hopefully over soon and you're back, hopefully to, soon. Yeah. We'll go out to go out to lunch and you can fill me in on everything that's going on in Dr. Fukuda's life. Right. <laughs> Still sounds weird. Still not ready for that. It's, it's got a good ring to it. Don't you think? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It, it <laughs> yeah. All those, all those late nights, all those papers, all the studying, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. It's <laughs> well, God it. has been very faithful. Amen, brother. Amen. So, well, thank you again, Matt. I appreciate it. And uh, again, if you need anything, you got my number, man. Just reach out, all right? All right. It sounds good, AJ. It's good talking to you. Likewise. Lord bless, brother. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. See ya.